Hello, everyone. I uh, hope uh, everyone is doing well uh, during these tough times. Um, I want to thank NCBH for hosting this digital education series, as well as Dr. Walker. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at NCBH next year. In the meantime, we're going to be talking about a new technology. Um, this is a to topic on the Houdini catheter intended for crossing total occlusions. Here are my disclosures. So Harry Houdini, the master magician, escape artist, uh, once said that magic is the sole science not accepted by scientists because they can't understand it. Well, as a scientist, I'm hoping that uh, this form of magic is something that we can understand when it comes to uh, crossing chronic total occlusions with uh, this device. So eight and a half million people, of course, have PAD. Uh, it's estimated that almost 40% of these have some form of chronic total occlusions with symptomatic disease. When we try to a uh, passage of a guide wire, uh, depending on operator expertise and experience, uh, failure rates can be either relatively high or very high. Um, and it's often difficult uh, to keep our wires within the true lumen. Um, Sometimes, uh, you know, we have to do an, uh, a pedal approach to cross these CTOs. Sometimes we know when we're deeply subintimal. And the net result of this is going to be uh, the requirement of a stent for uh, maintaining patency. Uh, but stenting is not always what we would like to do. Um, the Houdini catheter uh, really offers a simplified approach to keep a guide wire in the true lumen. And this is the schematic of the first generation device. It's five French compatible. There's a outer uh, a centering balloon that's four millimeters. Uh, the actual balloon length itself is uh, two centimeters. Uh, it's compatible with any wire uh, that we use from 14,000 to 035. The schematic on how it works is as follows. And when we encounter a CTL, say in the SFA, uh, we can advance our uh, device to the proximal cap of the CTO. And we inflate the balloon with an end deflator uh, that anchors uh, and centers the, uh, the wire and what we call the everting uh, balloon on the inner lumen. And there's a 20 centimeter length of this inner lumen that compresses the wire and allows uh, for passage of the wire through the true center of the vessel. So what you do is you have a two Y fittings and the proximal one is advanced while holding and pinning the distal Y fitting. And as you advance, you're essentially everting the inner lumen of the, uh, of the balloon and advancing the guide wire through the lesion. And essentially uh, with the potential of crossing the proximal cap and allowing your wire to pass freely. Uh, after a uh, successful cross. The, uh, in the inflated state, the wire in the first generation device was fixed, so you didn't really have much leeway with manipulating your wire. But when you deflate the balloon, you have free control of your wire so that you can further advance uh, through the lesion. And there's 20 centimeters, as I mentioned, of the inner lumen that uh, collapses uh, uh, onto the guide wire and is able to push the guide wire forward. The net uh, equivalency of some device like this is a operator holding a guide wire, wire uh, with his hand and exerting a force of almost 100 pounds. So it's a fair amount of force that you're able to uh, elicit to uh, break a proximal cap. So um, I've mentioned how we advance this catheter in the wire and the mannerism in which it's unroll it, it, that you advance this inner inverting balloon is similar to unrolling a carpet. Uh, this is unrolling mechanism, so to speak, to help uh, advance your, your, your device through a, uh, a CTO. And the beauty of this type of everting lumen is that there's very little, if at all, any shear force affected onto the plaque and vessel itself, which minimizes your risk for plaque dislodgement uh, during the revascularization process. Um, and, you know, as we all have done in the past, we can jackhammer a uh, crossing catheter through lesions, and there's significant risk of dislodging plaques when we, when we perform procedures uh, with that form of aggression. And so um, essentially, once you cross the lesion and pass your guide wire through, you can uh, advance the wire after deflating the balloon. 
and you'll have full uh, ability to withdraw your device and then treat the lesion uh, with whatever means uh, you uh, deem uh, appropriate. So here's a uh, quick video of the device if it'll play, showing you the catheter in action. Uh, so what you can see here is a center balloon uh, that centers the, uh, the device and you can see the everting balloon. You can take the device through a five or six French uh, sheath in an up and over uh, manner to the proximal cap of the lesion. And at that point, you're going to uh, pull the wire back into the tip of the everting balloon. You get as close as you can to the proximal cap, inflate the balloon, and then you're going to advance the Y fitting proximally towards the distal end. And what you can see is the everting uh, lumen uh, unrolling, so to speak, and advancing your wire through the, through the cap. So here's some clinical cases of uh, the Houdini catheter, first generation device in use for crossing CTOs. Here you can see an SFA occlusion proximally with a faint distal reconstitution near the adductor canal. In the next slide, what you see, you're gonna see on the left-hand side is the uh, center, space, center balloon being inflated to center the device. In this case, we use an estado wire uh, for penetrance, extra penetrance of the proximal cap. Uh, we advanced on the right side, the Y fitting towards the distal Y fitting and was able to re relatively easily break the cap through the center of the lumen. And we were able to confer, uh, further freely advance our wire after we reached that 20 centimeter length uh, through the remainder of the vessel. And we were able to confirm our position uh, intraluminally with an injection and were able to follow up the procedure simply with angioplasty and drug coated balloon uh, therapy. So there is a new generation of the Houdini device in development that is uh, uh, pending uh, 510K approval. Uh, the beauty of this newer device is its shorter throw to help penetrate caps more efficiently. There's a metallic microcatheter, which they have termed the teeny Houdini, which will be incorporated into the device where the operator in this generation will have full control of the wire throughout the procedure. Uh, and you can advance the catheter all the way towards uh, the distal cap if necessary. So here is a video showing a 14,000 uh, high torque wind wire, 13 gram tip load, failing to penetrate a simulated CTO cap. So this is a, a bench model. And you can see that standard attempts at trying to cross CTOs can be rather challenging. Now, in the next slide, we're going to show you uh, the next generation device on benchtop model. And here we're showing you where the anchoring balloon is securing the device in place. You can see the balloon being inflated. And in the next video, you can actually see the, penetrative, uh, the penetration force that can be elicited to uh, break uh, significant uh, cap, proximal caps or any cap such as calcific caps to cross lesions. It's as simple as that. The new device seems to show great promise in breaking these caps so that we can, as we know in SFA, is have various caps that we might have to cross throughout an SFA lesion. Uh, and this device may provide us the opportunity to do so while maintaining a uh, luminal position. So to conclude, we all have multiple techniques for crossing long CTOs. We would all like to stay within the lumen or near the true lumen of the vessel, if at all possible, because this really uh, limits the need for stenting, if at all. Um, the Houdini catheter allows for controlled guide wire entry and intraluminal crossing through these CTOs by the ability to uh, provide significant force uh, um, for this process. There's favorable vector forces that are induced as well as reduction of shear force. And this device in the future may have potential uh, um, applications to extrapolate beyond the SFA and popliteal segment into the, such as the iliac artery or potentially even the veins where we can encounter significant fibrosis 
Uh, infrapopliteal arterial occlusions with smaller devices may be possible in the future. And this can often potentially, uh, this could potentially provide us uh, enhanced clinical and procedural success. So we're looking forward to the next generation of this device as it moves through towards the uh, FDA approval process and we'll uh, keep our eyes open to see what the future holds. Thank you.